So I have a question. I, I was looking over the assignment that you guys did, and um, I, and I saw that you had video. Who brought in the video American Hollow? Back in the back. Okay, that was really interesting. Um, I actually was a police officer in um, for ten years prior to coming uh, moving up this way, and I was a police officer in Caldwell County and Catawba County, which is in the western part of the state. And so when I saw that video, it just reminded me of home. <laughs> it reminded me of my old job. Because I remember I moved here, I grew up in Miami. So it was very much culture shock for me when I went to uh, work in, in Caldwell County, which was my first job. And I remember going to this one call. I, was, I only worked there for a year. And uh, I was one of two female officers that they had just hired, so they weren't used to having females on the department at all. It was back in, it wasn't terribly long ago, 1994 my first law enforcement job and I went in and I was on this domestic violence call and there was this woman there and, and she runs up to me of course panicking and going you know me oh yeah I hit it all off for him those red heels over there and I'm you know and I'm like wait slow down what did you do and that's how it sounded you gotta hit me hit me all for it wait a minute where what are you saying where did he hit you and I remember having to he had to she had to explain it said point oh hit me on my forehead what's a forehead oh Forehead, forehead, right? Yeah, oh yeah. And and then use those red heels. I'll go, what red heels? Where? We was talking about um, heels of your shoes. <laughs> red heels, you know? And, and that was like, for me, and of course, you know, it was just different to see these these people. And, and I literally, uh, one time, one of my best friend's grandmother called the house and left a message on the machine. Hello, it's your mama. And on and on and on. And I said, okay, you have to translate for me because I don't understand anything that was just said. Any of you have people that talk like that and you don't really understand what they're saying? Yeah, so it was kind of interesting. So my question is, what is culture? Um, so we're talking about this Appalachian culture that exists. Um, and I'm going to kind of go over that a little bit in more detail. But what is culture? What do you think culture is? way people live, but it's more detailed than that. Or maybe more general maybe than that. Traditions. traditions, values, beliefs. Is it passed down from one generation to the other? Sometimes. Yeah, we teach culture, don't we? The media does it too. Media teaches us how we speak be all good in this case, all good little Americans. You know, this is what you do as a uh, you know, and um, you you have these rules and we we have this language and values and belief system and we have religion and all this other stuff that, that plays into our culture, doesn't it? Popular media, you know, that shows uh, how women should look, how men should look, you know, all this kind of feeds into what is what is culture. So can culture be changed? You think? Yes. Mm -hmm. And can it be different in different places? Absolutely. As we are noticing with this American hollow group, right? So it's been definitely interesting. Interesting. I have a question for you. And here, and, and by the way, if you ever take my class, we have a safe zone, and we're allowed to say whatever we want in the class, and I always say that ignorance is perfectly acceptable because it's my job to teach you differently, but hate is not tolerated, you know, because there's a difference between the two. But you'd be surprised, based on culture, how many people are ignorant, right? They, Because it's been taught from one generation to the other to the other, and ignorance basically is, is not knowing any better. Um, you know, it's not necessarily a bad word like some people make it out. I don't look at it as a bad word. I look at it as something, a teaching opportunity, right? So let's do a little fun activity here. Poor Appalachia or Appalachian. Based on the American Hollow video, give me some stereotypes that go along. And we're allowed to say whatever you want. Give me some stereotypes that go along with that group. Derogatory terms, stereotypes. They're backwoods. Okay, backwoods. And forgive me, when I get up on the board, for some reason I can't spell anymore. I don't have that computer to spell check. Um, backwards. Their, their family tree doesn't form. <laughs> okay, so inbred? Ancestral, <laughs> ancestral relationships. Spell ancestral. S-E-I-S-T-U-A-L, right? That looks good. Okay, good. Um, ancestral, right? What else? Okay, so let's say... What about what am I, redneck? Is that come from hillbilly. hillbilly? Redneck? Yeah, yeah. I've been told there's a difference. When you come from when you come from Miami, hillbilly and rednecks look the same. You don't really know there's a hillbilly and you redneck. Some people might say, in, if you want to be more even more derogatory, you might say white trash, right? You've heard that. 
Right? Am I right? That's what I've, I've heard that before when I moved here. I remember um, it was definitely a culture shock for me because a lot of these people didn't have teeth, you know, um, and and that was part of the reason their 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 language was um, distorted a little bit too in some cases. Um, that was very much a culture. Um, so you have these individuals, and they they have. Would you say this is a sort of culture or a mentality, maybe? Right? And people cherish their culture, you know? Um, Southern culture, for example. Um, you know, any particular type of, uh, there's subcultures that exist, countercultures that exist. People really come sometimes like this stuff. So we got these backwoods, ancestral, uneducated, hillbilly, redneck, white trash. Whew, wow. <laughs> I, I wouldn't want to be put under this group, would you? No, it's not. But are all these true about these people necessarily? No. It's stereotyping, isn't it? If we said all of them are like that. Do you think these are good-hearted people? Do you think they value family? We saw that, right? Value family so much that they might give up everything else to be part of that family. So you see these some things are more important to others, to some than to others. Um, so, and they have a way of life that's a little different than we may think is different, but to them is perfectly normal. I was thinking about this when I was given this assignment. I was like, what if I was born in Appalachia, right? And I didn't know any different. You know, same circumstances, but you were born there. Um, or I think of like Westboro Baptist Church, for example, like very strong, you know, if you were born a child of somebody who was a, a preacher for Westboro Baptist Church, might you have the same opinions and feelings as them? Yeah, you'd be, that's, that's all you'd be surrounded with, and you would know no different. How would you learn different? Going out and exploring, right? So that's what we're talking about here. How do you get, why, first of all, I think was the question of why do these people stay in here? And why don't they get out? And then we're like, okay, so what would we do? We would, we would go out and explore, okay? And then depending on what happens when we go out and explore, we'll determine whether we say, okay, I really like this or no, I really go back. What can happen when you go out and explore that can cause you to either leave or come back? Money. Money, be more specific. How so? Lack of money. <laughs> Lack of money. Because I think in the example that was given, all these children left and then they all came back and that was pretty surprising. But then when Miss um, Walker told me a little bit more about what they were doing when they left and this economy, well, it was, it's like cost and benefit, you know, cost and, and uh, rewards. And if you're getting more rewards for something, you're going to stay there. If you're getting, it's like a business, you know, if you're spending more money, then you're going to leave. Well, these people went out, and first of all, do you think this mentality was accepted in outside of their environment? Probably not, right? So that might have been one area where they were feeling like outsiders in this other area, in this, and then money. So if they went out, you think the same situation, because most of them had like low labor jobs, if I remember correctly. If they went out and say became a CEO of a corporation or something like that, might that change whether they came back or not? So money's one, but that's not it. Money's, money's definitely one. What would be another one? The advancement of technology. They don't understand it. They don't understand it. So if you think if they were to get more involved in technology, the use of, okay, because that would do what to them? What would be the? Okay, so you modernize them. So you're getting, you're kind of getting it. So there's something significant that we're looking for to get you out of this culture of poverty. And a culture of poverty is something where it's comfortable, you know, um, it's easy, you know, there's no, like, for example, I was really surprised to see that a lot of these people were on welfare and they were on the system because usually a lot of times uh, some of these groups will be anti government and not believe in that, but yet, they work hard, they go out and they, they you know, um, hunted and gathered, so to speak. Um, but they had a steady check coming in, right? They had the food stamps. They had um, health care possibly because probably qualified for Medicaid or something like that. So there's some security there, isn't there? Because going out and working at McDonald's or something, could you pay your bills? Do you think you off a minimum wage? Can, can, and have health insurance? And raise kids? No. So there's no benefits there, right? And no support because now the outside world's probably gonna look at you and call you all these names. So go back here, go back to what is safe, you know, back home, uh, the Appalachia, where Appalachia, because that's where I fit in, 
and I feel safe and comfortable. That's one argument or one theory of why people stay in these environments that you would think, why don't they get out? What's another real big key factor of whether they'll stay or go? Big one. Well, yeah, but that happens in every group. Um, but you're doing it right now. I'll give you a hint. Education. Ah, here, education. Think about it. Are these people generally higher, have higher education, or are they pretty much, I mean, just listen to their language, right? What happens when you get educated? <coughs> Many things happen, not just the fact that you're learning, but what else? I might like to explore new things. A lot of these places will look look down upon education. I remember when my best friend left um, that area, the Caldwell County Hickory area. Um, her family kind of disowned her and said, "Oh, you think you're too good for us now? You know, you're getting all that education, you know, and and stuff like that." And actually, she got criticized for leaving. Now, all of her family members are, especially females, are pregnant now at 16, 17, 18 years old. Um, they're living, you know, in their in their homes that are usually smaller than what we're used to. A lot of trailers, um, which there's nothing wrong with living in a trailer, um, but low income housing, you know, small houses. Low, and that's fine. That's the culture, you know. But she escaped and then she was criticized because she escaped because she got an education, you know, and that was a, a big deal. So education. But when you're in a classroom like this, do you see what also you experience? Because this is a great example in this classroom. Except one male. Oh, you're my token male. <laughs> what do you say? Diversity. Ah, diversity, right? So say you grew up in an all Appalachian school and everybody's just like you and you don't know any different. Um, you get outside of that environment and now you meet these other people and hey, they're not so bad. You know, I, I kind of like them. And this works with any minority group or group, you know, that's in kind of this circumstance or condition. And so you could see that getting out is hard when you're going to get the family. I mean, this happens in poor African American communities too, where if they try to, some people try to get out, then they're like, oh, you're, you know, you're feeding into the man, and you don't, you know, you're, you're just trying to do this or you're trying to do that, and, and it's actually harder for young um, African Americans to get out of their community than it is for them to stay. Does that sound familiar? Sounds familiar. Um, so it's kind of an interesting phenomenon that goes on. But this group gets it. I mean, they they have. They get the same way a lot of other minority groups get, but it's safe where they are. So, any questions? Mm -hmm.